He's the myth. He's the legend. He's the scientist with all the questions and all the answers. It's time for another episode of Alex's Science Corner. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, please enough. Thank you. <laughs> Alex, what's going on in the wide, wide world of science, my friend? Okay, first up. The Hubble telescope may have spotted the first known exomoon. What's an exomoon? Exomoon is a moon around a planet around a different star. Exoplanets are planets that are not around our sun, planets orbiting other stars, and they think they found a moon around one of those other planets. I thought that was common that they found no no this is the first one uh, they're not sure about it yet they're pretty sure but not absolutely positive okay but there's enough evidence that they can definitely start saying that is a thing for them to start double checking okay and the way they did it is by the transit method and what the transit method is is this planet will pass in front of its star and when it passes in front of its star there's a dip in the sunlight because of the planet is blocking, blocking just the sunlight. a little bit. Right, right, right. And so what they were seeing around this planet is there's the time varies a little bit from when the dip starts to when it's expected to start. And there's a second dip that either precedes it or follows it. And so because that second dip is it can be in different places, and because the time of the planet arriving and starting it is going it's affecting it so they've got a strong indication that this planet has a moon now one of the things that allowed them to spot this was the fact that the main planet is about uh 10 times the size of jupiter so it's big that's a big planet yes so it and must be moon, around the big sun yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to be because it, the planet is probably pretty close to its star. Okay. Uh, but the moon, they suspect, is about the size of Neptune. So it's a really, really big moon. So think okay. of our, the planet Neptune, which is a gas giant. It's around that size. And so the exciting part about this is they think they found it now they can't confirm it just yet because they have to wait like two or three more orbits to just get the to see that it's still doing the same right right yep. i mean they've seen it enough because originally it was spotted by the kepler space telescope and they used hubble because, hubble because hubble can get a finer detail on the measurement and so they're just trying to confirm all that stuff. When they first did the the first measurement, the time that they had set aside on the Hubble telescope to do this ran out before it finished doing the transit. And so because of that, they didn't get all the information that they needed, so they don't want to confirm Okay, can you explain that a little bit? So they have to barter time for uh, the telescope yes all telescopes when uh it's not just uh you go in and put your name on a sign-up sheet uh i didn't even think they it, did that i thought they you know i thought these were scientists that were dedicated no. to looking through hubble what it is you've got i mean uh, yeah you've got the scientists who work on the hubble but their job is to control hubble and make sure it's pointing the right way if you've got uh, for any telescope, when an astronomer wants to go use a telescope, they have to put in a proposal and the budget and say how much time, where are they going to be looking, all this stuff. And they send this up to a team that reviews all the different proposals that they get and says, A, does it fit into our already allotted uh time schedule? Uh, do we want to bump something? Is this important enough, not important enough? If it's not important enough, they send it back and the uh, astronomer tries to go to a different telescope. The Hubble, being the Hubble telescope, can only look at one thing at a time. So because of what it is, that's like only the biggest science stuff that they think they can work on is going to go to the Hubble. Everything else starts getting passed along to smaller and uh, other telescopes. And I'm sorry, I would expect there's a fee then that goes along with it. Yeah, I mean, whatever university you work for or whatever budget that you have, you're sending part of that fee that you get this time and you're paying for that time on that Because telescope. you're paying for the staff to, to uh, Right, have, right. Yeah, because those, the yeah. astronomer that's doing this is not actually at the telescope. They just send, here's where I want you to look for how long. 
And, and then, then if the they Hubble get approved, team sends the data back. Correct. Okay. So, you know, like th uh, two years later, you'll get the data back from the Hubble team because ah. that's when they were able to do the work. And so, I mean, sometimes you can get these requests that can go about between two to five years from the time you initially make the request to the time you get your data from that uh, mission. Can, can somebody who's requesting it, and I realize we're going off tr track here, uh, you know, I'll ask you that question later. Go on. What's your next okay. story? <laughs> Thank you for the permission, Bobby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the next one well, is... I just, I just found that very fascinating. They found another object in the outskirts, or outskirts of our solar system, um, a new dwarf planet. Now, this is not Planet 9 or Planet 10 what? or Planet 14, depending on which planetary description you're using but it's a dwarf planet that they've discovered it's 65 times the distance from the sun as the earth is so earth is one astronomical unit this other planet is 65 astronomical units away that's because it's on its closest approach right now on its farthest side of it it's like about 250 times the distance from the Earth to the Sun. And this is in our solar system or yes, outside? It is. No, system. it's in our solar system. Okay. Our solar system is big. Uh, we can only see, and the reason why we saw this object it is because it's 65, uh, 65 times the distance. Uh, but the astronomers are using really high power f powered telescopes to look at a very specific spot. The reason why they're looking at this spot is because they've seen a lot of other objects in there that have these weird orbits. And this is adding to the idea that there may be a large object that is bringing these, these smaller objects into this orbit. The planet 10 or the planet 9 or the planet 14 that you're talking about before. Planet X. Yeah, planet X, also known as planet 10. Or Planet Nine. X or planet sounds 14. cooler. I'm sorry. I know. I know. It's like the it's like the iPhone X. It's not. They so say this it's is iPhone back 10, when but. it would be X if if Pluto was still a planet. That yeah, and Planet Nine because Pluto is not. But if you want to count the dwarf planets, it would be Planet Fourteen. So okay, because we've got a bunch of other small bodies like uh, Sedona and Ceres and others that would become planets. If you're going to make Pluto a planet, there's a bunch of other... Pluto other was a planet, so I mean, you know, it's, how can you... Anyway, so You know there planet... are four moons that are larger than Pluto, right? Really? Yes. No, I did not know that. No, our moon is larger than Pluto. Wow. Okay, so anyway, okay. They, the fun part about this is this gives an indication that there may be something out there that is tying the orbits of all these objects together. Okay. Uh, the other side of that argument is we've been looking at one very specific spot in space looking for this planet to see if we can find it. And we, space is big. Space is really, really big. And we, there may be other objects that have similar orbits in other places that we can't see because we haven't seen them yet. Uh, for example, this object, we would not see it if it was on the far edge of its orbit because the only reason we're seeing it right now is because it's as close as it is. Is it elliptical around the sun? Oh, yes. It's yes. around, and it's around yeah. our sun. The yeah. close portion of it is 65 times the distance from the Earth or 65 astronomical units, the far end of that orbit is 250 astronomical units. So it's a little so, chilly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but my, my point being is that the far, it, it's, where, where are we in relationship to that orbit? And how long does it take to make that orbit? Uh, it takes uh, probably over thousands of years. Okay. So, because again, uh, um, Jupiter takes decades to go around the Earth or around the sun. sun. Yeah, and so the farther you go out, the longer it takes to orbit. And this is a very highly elliptical orbit. So as far as it is and as elliptical as its orbit is, it takes a long time. So we are catching it at its close point. We wouldn't know it's there if it was farther out. So there's a lot of stuff to look at out there. But this is... 
this is giving a hint that there may be something, there may be a very large planet like a Saturn-sized or a Neptune-sized planet out there that may be bringing these objects closer in and giving these objects a more common orbit. That's pretty wild that there could be a... Yeah, yeah, that we didn't know was out there. Mm -hmm. Well, it's so far away. Even And again, if it's at the far end of its orbit, we just don't know where to look. Mm. All right. Anything else to add? No, that's it for today. All right. If you have any questions for these two stories that Alex just presented or anything else science-related, feel free to call them right now at 203-837-9924.